Hello, my name's Dr Jane Maseglia and I'm Senior Scientist on the Latin Now Project. The Latin Now Project is a big European project that's based in Nottingham, Oxford and Leicester and we're interested in what happened when Latin arrived in Western Europe and began to replace and push out the languages that had been there before. One of the things we've been looking at lately is what happened when people in Britain, for example, started taking on Latin and Roman habits like writing curse tablets to the gods when something bad happened and that's what we're going to be looking at in this activity. Now this activity is a family activity, it's suitable for all ages as long as you can hold a pencil. Um, you'll need to download the worksheet that goes with it called Curse Like a Roman and this is two pages or double sided and you'll just need a pencil and if you've got both of those things then we can get going. Hello and welcome to this activity session from the Latin Now project on how to curse like a Roman. Imagine you're a Roman and you're angry. Somebody has done you wrong. They've cheated you or they've stolen something from you. Now, in the Roman Empire, there wasn't a police force the Romans could go to with small scale crime like theft or personal disagreements. So one of the ways that they could get help was to write to the gods and ask for their help. We call these written messages to the gods curse tablets. And that's because the Romans often asked their gods to do something really horrible to the person that had done them wrong. So a curse tablet is a type of spell or a wish for something bad to happen to someone as a way of getting even. And that's exactly what we're going to be learning how to do now. First, a little word about writing in the Roman world. Now, what kinds of materials do we write our letters on today? Well, we use paper and whiteboards. And then, of course, there's phone and tablet and computer screens. But what did the Romans use? Now, how many of these have you seen before? One of the ways Romans could make their letters was by scratching into things. Now, the top of this picture shows a wax tablet and stylus. A tablet was a thick frame of wood and it was filled with a layer of beeswax. And you used the pointy end of the stylus to scratch your message into the wax. Now, these tablets were clever because they were reusable. Once your message had been read or you'd finished with it, the wax could be scraped using the wide end or it could be melted flat again and filled. So it's recyclable. On the bottom here, we've got a little curse tablet. And this is exactly the kind of object that we're going to be looking at today. These are very small little metal sheets. They're usually no bigger than about eight centimetres and messages are scratched on them using a sharp point. As well as scratching, there's inking, which is a little bit more like our pen and paper. On the top here, you can see a wooden tablet, a very thin uh, sliver of wood that was cut with a file and an ink pot and something that we call a calamus, which is really just a fancy word for an ink pen. It's, this is a reed that's been cut into a point. Uh, the wooden tablets were particularly popular in the north of England at a place called Vindolanda near Hadrian's Wall. They found lots of examples of these little wooden sheets. But if other people had access to other materials, they used those too. So on the bottom, you've got papyrus. And this is what we tend to think of when we think about Roman scrolls. Papyrus is made from the dried leaves of a plant that grows in Egypt. So quite difficult to get hold of if you're in the north of England. It's very smooth and lovely to write on, but it's quite stiff. And it was written on using ink in the same way as the wooden tablet. The final way that the Romans could do their writing, of course, was carving. And we've got lots of examples of things that are carved because they tend to survive. Carving tends to be in really hard materials like stone. And these tend to be used for special occasions because they're usually really very heavy. You'll notice that each of these writing materials has a slightly different purpose. So scratching on the wax tablet is for short temporary notes. The metal tablet is for permanent messages. There's ink for personal letters and records between people. And then there's stone for big monuments. And once you've written your curse tablet in the ancient world, you want to send it to the gods. But how do you send a Roman god a letter? Well, you can't do it through the post. They don't have an inbox. So what the Romans used to do was send their messages to the gods and goddesses who they thought lived particularly in watery places like rivers and springs and throw their curse tablet into the water where they thought the god would find it and read it. One of the best evidence we have for curse tablets that have been successfully sent comes from Bath in southwest England. 
Now Bath, back in Roman times, was called Aquae Sulis, or the Waters of Sulis, and there it was a sacred site where there was a very well-known temple dedicated to the goddess Sulis Minerva. Now her name Sulis Minerva is actually a combination of two names. Minerva you might have heard of before. Minerva is the Roman goddess of wisdom. She's the equivalent of the Greek Athena, whereas Sulis is the name of a Celtic goddess. And at Aquae Sulis, they put these two names together to make a combined goddess. Also at the site, there was importantly a hot spring with hot water coming out of the ground, and that hot spring is still there to this very day. Now at Bath, archaeologists have found around 150 cursed tablets in the water, and they were thrown into the spring sometime between the 2nd and the 4th centuries AD. And what we've noticed is most of them are about thefts. So when things were stolen, it was usually that that made a Roman want to write a curse tablet and send a message to the goddess. Now imagine that you're an archaeologist and you've been brought these two objects. Can you work out how a curse tablet was prepared for sending? This is the equivalent of putting it in an envelope and putting a stamp on. On the left hand side, you might be able to see that the curse tablet has been rolled up really tight and it's been pierced through with a pointed nail. On the right hand side, you can see the curse tablet that's been unrolled. Now it looks from the fat version as if it's been pierced with lots of different holes, but actually these are the same holes. When you roll up the curse tablet and put the spike through it, because there are lots of layers within that tight sausage, it makes several holes at once. Can you think why the Romans might have driven a nail through the curse tablet? Now, we're not entirely sure. We think it might have something to do with the idea of wanting to keep the message secret. It might be connected to the idea of the curses being horrible and aggressive and the idea of them being designed to hurt someone. And some people think that there's a link between the binding words that they tend to use in the curses. There's lots of reference to binding people with magic and perhaps closing up and binding the curse tablet roll with a nail. So here we can see a line drawing showing you how it works. Here's someone scratching with a very sharp point onto their cursed tablet, rolling it all up and finally driving the nail through. This drawing looks very scruffy, but it gives a really good idea of how difficult it can be to read a Roman cursed tablet. And it's difficult for all kinds of reasons. The first, of course, is that it's written in Latin, which is the language of the Romans in Western Europe. The second is that it's written in a very particular type of handwriting that we call Old Roman Cursive. And we're going to be looking at that in a bit more detail. So here you can see on the left a line drawing of what it uh, looked like. In the middle, we've got the Latin and on the right hand side, the translation. And here it is. I've dedicated to the goddess Sulis Minerva, the thief who stole my hooded cloak. Whether they're slave or free, whether they're man or woman, they cannot buy back this gift except with their own blood. It's really gory and that's a very common feature of Roman curse tablets. Things that we think of as rather ordinary, like a cloak going missing, can sometimes make people so angry that they want to make someone bleed and die and suffer. So to be able to read a Roman curse tablet that's been dug up in a place like Bath, your Latin has to be pretty good, but you also have to be able to read Roman handwriting, and it's not always easy. Here is the alphabet written out in old Roman cursive on the top, and then our version typeset underneath. You'll notice that some of the letters are quite similar. Take, for example, F or H, but then some of them look really different. Just take a look at B, for example. That looks a little bit like a modern A to us, and that can be quite confusing. The letter R can also be a bit confusing because it looks like a P. But this is the everyday handwriting of Romans. Now, normally, if we ever see any Latin, it tends to be either neatly written, typed up in books, or we see it in nice big capitals on an inscription. But that's not how most Romans wrote every day. So in order to write a curse like a real Roman, you have to master the old Roman cursive alphabet. You'll notice that some letters are also missing. There's no J, for example, there's no K, there's no Y. If you've got a moment now, pause the video and have a go at writing your name using the old Roman cursive alphabet. Scribble it on the side of your worksheet and see how you do. 
Now, if you need to use a letter that doesn't exist in this alphabet, you simply have to choose another letter that makes the same kind of sound. And now that you've got your eye in with writing your name in Old Roman cursive, it's time to try something a bit trickier. Now it's your turn to try deciphering a whole message. Now, this curse tablet that you see here is exactly the same one as you find on the front of your worksheet. So you can scribble on the worksheet to help you along. Now, we haven't been so mean as to write this in Latin and expect you to work everything out. This is, in fact, a message in English written in Old Roman cursive letters. And once you've had a go at translating it, come back to the video and unpress pause. How do you get on? Here comes the answers. It reads, I have lost my dagger. Goddess Sulis, burn the thief in fire until he returns it. And there's even a picture of a little dagger at the bottom so that the goddess knows exactly what the person is asking for. Now, in this particular version, we helped a little bit by showing small gaps between the words. It was quite common when Romans wrote to, in fact, squidge all the letters up together with no gaps in between the, the words at all. And sometimes when they came to the end of a line, they would start the next line, even if it was in the middle of a word. So if you're going to do some more practice with your old Roman cursive, perhaps writing some secret messages, then you might make it even more difficult for people to read by not leaving gaps between words and by breaking words up over the lines just like a Roman would do. So now that you've tried reading a curse in old Roman cursive, now you can try writing one yourself. On the back of the worksheet, under the title Try It Yourself, there are the instructions for just what to do. So a Latin curse is usually in three parts. There's usually a description of what you've lost, the name of the god or the goddess that you're trying to contact. And then this is the gory bit, what you would like him or her to do to the person who's taken your things. There's a repeat of the old Roman cursive, a letter key in the middle and a blank space underneath for you to write your curse. Now, if you feel like taking a photograph of your curse at the end and sending it to us, we would love to see it. The best way to send us a picture of your curse is through Twitter, and you can find us there at LatinNowERC. If you'd like to learn anything more about the Latin Now project, whether it's about our research or the team or about all of our outreach work and our resources, you can find us on our website, which is LatinNow.eu.